have more. I do. Okay, good. Um, let's talk about how long you've been an atheist. Remember when you were president um, and what your earliest memories of the organization are. So I, I probably have a different story. I actually started attending a conference when I was a student, and I can't remember when I actually joined this, but, but I started coming in 1978 when I was in school and have been coming ever since. So I guess if you count from the first time I attended, then that's what, 38, 39 years. And I'm sure subsequent to that, I joined sometime <laughs> officially, but not being a professor at that point, being a student, it wasn't something I could do. But I did start to attend the conferences quite early and have continued. Uh, for a very long time, to, to my benefit, I would offer. Um, it was strange. I think my first recollection was that it was more of an upstart organization, and I liked that. Uh, being a student, uh, it really um, had another avenue for me to think about the profession I was about to enter. Uh, and that was extremely helpful. People in ACSP are very generous with their time, uh, and to your point, they're, and they're very fa passionate about what it is that we study and do and implement. And so for me, it was really a great opportunity as a student to become affiliated and to look at the professors, some of whom were my professors, and to be um, in a dialogue with them that had an international and then later on a uh, national and later on an international perspective. So um, then from 19, I guess 1991 to 1993, I served as the vice president. And what happens is you start a number of initiatives that then carry on when you become president, which I did in 1993 and 1995. Um, and um, I, I wanted to change some of what I found when I was a student, largely because it was mostly male and mostly white uh, and uh, a pretty um, homogeneous group. Uh, and I thought that as planners we ought to be a bit different and to look a bit different that the organization needed to reflect cities and places and regions which we study. So that was uh, something that I brought to uh, the Association of Collegiate Schools of Planning and I remember uh, accepting the chairmanship of a committee on the recruitment and retention of women and minorities under Carl Patton and kept that as my mantra when I became the president of the organization. So a lot of time, and I guess my biggest honor, uh, and I've had the honor to serve as the first female president ever of the Association of Collegiate Schools of Planning. And that to me felt like I was really trying to contribute uh, in a way that was important and different. Were, um, just this is a personal curiosity, so you were the first female president. Were you also the first um, black or um, president of That's a great question. I'm wondering, and I, I don't know, but if I had to bet, I would bet I would be. <laughs> it would be my guess. Like, yeah, I, that's a, I, I, I suspect that might have been the case. That, I feel like that's a lot on somebody's shoulder. It is. And so as a woman in the, you said, late 70s. Yes, you were in 80s. College, mm -hmm. um, that path is um, heavy. It is, no. But it's really important. And at that point in time, the role of women was really top of mind for all of us. And so gender working with the inclusion of women in the t standing committees the, uh, of the organization and the major initiatives, having women positioned to be active participants, not just attendees, was a large part of how we spent our time. We had a, a number of wonderful women who provided great leadership. Uh, I'm thinking of Marsha and a number of others who really, um, really worked hard uh, in that regard. And we made a lot of progress. So to have a female president was, was really important to all of us. And I can remember one of, my, one of my uptakes as president was I made the comment that when we have had as many female presidents as we have had male, and I think it started in 1957, that would represent parity. So a bit of a joke there. <laughs> Although everybody didn't <laughs> laugh at the time. I thought it was pretty <laughs> insightful. Yeah. <laughs> well, so um, let's talk about your presidency, and um, you talked a little bit about what your plans were. What do you um, what do you see as your biggest accomplishment, and um, then maybe what that looks like as we move forward as an organization? 
Well, I certainly think uh, focus on, um, on the evaluation of planning schools, building the capacity in terms of our site visit teams. And, and the budgeting is something all of us will talk about. It's an ongoing challenge. I, I think now we're in the best shape that we've been in, but every president has the budgetary challenge. Uh, and it was something we all took on, some in more significant ways, but as a leader of the organization, you had no choice um, but to make sure you were well informed and very actively involved in, in the budgeting process. And many times it was a very lean budget, so there was always the danger that there would be a, a real downturn and a, and, a, and a deficit that we would have to be concerned with. So I will put that on everyone's agenda up, and I will say up until the last 15 years or so, that, and, and still it, it is it's a challenge. I, I guess the thing that really sticks out in my mind is really pushing back frontiers with regard to not only diversity, but the things that help make an organization resilient. Uh, we were looking at more global issues were now on the horizon, and that certainly isn't where we started. And I've talked about the diversity issue, uh, the evaluation of schools uh, in terms of visiting site team visits and how do you comprise those and what's the evaluation metrics, uh, metrics. All of those were ongoing discussions that were part of my experience. Um, not only historically when I served as president but on a going forward basis and I would offer the diversity is still a major challenge for the association even as we talk in 2016. Um, so. I agree, and a lot of what happened during that time was consciousness raising. And sometimes people aren't just aren't aware, they just aren't conscious. And so a lot of the gender, the minority, uh, the leadership roles uh, were all consciously things we pursued and I think the organization benefited and to the point, it, a constant reference to that or, or making people more aware of the lack of that really has helped move uh, ACSB forward. We've had great leadership, the faculty women's interest group, uh, to keep a, a, a continual spotlight on the role of women in the organization is um, unparalleled. So a couple of, of topics uh, that, that I think represent both opportunities and challenges on a going forward basis. Um, one is a closer link with practitioners. Uh, we are in the academy and I think we do pretty good work and too often it stays in the academy. It doesn't get translated um, so that practitioners can use it, uh, can take advantage of it. So that is something that I hope we work on Online education is, is, is racing ahead, but I've not heard much about it uh, with regard to, or and I'm sure there are folks working on it, I haven't tracked it, but I wonder about the ability we'll have to communicate with communities and stakeholders more effectively, uh, to broaden the awareness of, of planning uh, through taking advantage of those portals, that technology uh, is also um, really interesting. The, the other two or three opportunities have to do with us having more of a voice a voice on planning issues. I would love for the national media to come to us and say, what do you think, um, members, leadership of ACSP relative to planning issues? We do a fairly decent job, I suspect, locally and regionally, but not nationally, and I'd like a, a national voice. And then the, the other two observations has to do with us really looking at the resilient city. I think we 
are ignoring that a bit to our own peril <coughs> because we do have educational um, challenges in almost every American city. Uh, the disenfranchised numbers are growing, affordable housing, uh, the whole idea of, of city planners studying cities and figuring out and confronting the realities of cities as we try to remake them, uh, I think a bit more focus on that as a center piece uh, of what we do. And then lastly, I hope we'll become a model for embracing the shifting demographics that are America. Yeah. Yeah. Since 16, when she left, it's pretty <coughs> well, I've done that. Maybe that's what it will sound like. <laughs> Probably. <laughs>